Uh, my name is Xi Ming Guo. I'm a professor of marine science. I'm part of the Institute of Marine and Coastal Sciences at Rutgers University. But my laboratory is based at Huskin Shellfish Lab on Delaware Bay. We do research in the general area of oyster genetics and breeding. The goal of the research is to breed a superior oyster uh, for aquaculture. Aquaculture is the farming in aquatic environments, like fish farming, oyster farming, they are all part of aquaculture. The farmers need an oyster that grew faster, that resist to disease, have a better meat quality, and also is friendly to the environment. We try to address these different needs of the oyster farming industry at using different methods. For example, the oysters have two very important diseases. Each of these diseases can cause heavy mortalities in oysters. We are trying to breed a disease-resistant oyster so that farmers can have a better survival, better return. For disease resistance, we're trying to study uh, the disease resistant genes in oysters, identify them, see if we can identify uh, oysters with disease resistant genes, we can selectively breed them. First, we need to uh, see how many genes in the oyster genome. We have sequenced the oyster genome, we have cataloged all the genes in the oyster. There are about 28,000 genes, and we're trying to see if an uh, oyster gets infected, which genes got turned on, which genes get turned off, and then we're trying to understand which genes is responsible for this uh, resistance. I think this lab is really unique um, for oyster research. This lab has a long history, and um, it has been focused on oyster research for uh, over 100 years. So we have a collection, one of the largest collection of living oyster species here in this lab uh, from all over the world. Uh, so that's a very important resource when we study uh, variation in oysters. We're also trying to um, improve the growth of the oyster. To do that, we use a different approach. We produce triploid oysters. Triploid oysters are oysters that have three sets of chromosomes. The normal oysters have two sets of chromosomes, but we created a method that can produce an oyster with three sets of chromosomes. Triploid oysters have several advantages. When they grow faster, they are sterile, so they don't reproduce. If they don't reproduce, they are good for the environment because they don't interbreed with the wild population. Uh, if they are stereo, they also have a better meat quality in the summer. So at Rutgers, we produced a, a, a new method, a tetraploid oyster. When it crossed with diploid, it produced 100% triploid. So tetraploid oyster is what we produced here at Rutgers. No, it's used all over the world to produce triploid oysters. I think the oyster uh, populations in the U.S. and also in other parts of the world facing a lot of challenges because of uh, pollution, overfishing, and climate change, and new disease. And a lot of these populations are declining. And I think there are a lot of things we can do to help the oyster fishery the, uh, to rebuild the population, to sustain the oyster fishery, and also to support aquaculture development, not only in the U.S., but also in other countries.